welcome to episode 43 of the Woolly Wolverine podcast. My name is Laura and I am the host of this knitting and sometimes crochet podcast where I talk about all my works in progress, finished objects and all that kind of stuff with my crafting. Today is Sunday the 11th of April 2021 and I'm coming to you from my home in Kildare where I live with my family and my two cats and yeah that's basically it. Um, hello and welcome to all returning viewers and any new viewers. Hello, I hope you enjoy. If not, feel free to move along. Um, so yeah, this is going to be quite a quick episode, I think, because I recorded last week because I was a bit behind schedule. So this one is just to kind of get me a um, bit more back on my normal schedule. Um, and yeah, I said I would show this jumper. It's very warm here today, so this won't be lasting on me but um I said I would show it to you on my body. So this is the Rosemary and Time jumper by Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns and um, this is a test knit that I um knit for Grace to test out her new design um, and this is my finished object. So it is a colour work yoked DK sweater. I knitted in John Arbin knit by numbers um in I think there's five colours in this. Um, so I'll just sit up, stand up and give you a little twirly whirl. There's a little bit of colour work down the end and on the sleeves. Yeah, it is pretty. Oh, got a lot of hair. Um, so yeah, this is it. I think it's really nice. I like how it sits up on the neck. It is very warm, so it's definitely going to be a more um, autumnal winter jumper here for our Irish climate. Um, but yeah, I think it's really gorgeous. Um, I love this pop of pink. I really am happy with the colours I chose. I think it's really warm and cosy and rustic. And I like that it goes up on the neck. I said that already, but I do. And yeah, that's about it. I did aim, so I need to, I still need to block this. I lied. I said I'd have it blocked. I have woven in the ends, but I just need to block it still. Um, so I'm hoping that the sleeves, I'll kind of give them a bit of a tug so they go down because normally they're, they're just here. Now I could rip out and add a little bit of length to the ribbing if I really wanted to. Um, but like they're pullable downable. So when I block it, they might stretch. But yeah, I did full length body. Um, it sits just above, just below my, well, mid hip length, I'd say. And yeah, I love it. So, da, 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 da. Um, I also have another finished object, um, just a pair of socks that I finished um, during the week. So this is in Ellie and Ada. I can't remember the name of the colorway, but it is this gorgeous uh, pinky red kind of uh, yellow speckles in there and kind of tones of orange. Um, and I did kind of just my own lace design on the middle of the foot. Um, one or two of you have requested that I write this down, so I will. Um, there's not a huge amount to it, so I don't know if I'll end up charging for it. I do have, actually just as a, an aside, I have two other sock patterns, um, which I'll link down below, and I have added them to pay hip in the um, last week. So if you have trouble accessing Ravelry, um, that's available to you as an option below as well, just in case you're wondering. So this is a another pair of socks um, in the in the completed section. I do need to give them a bit of a wash um, just to kind of finish them off. But I just kind of added, just pulled this from my pile of minis that I have. It's a yellow um, heel flap. Yeah, I've got two. Yay, socks. I love knitting socks. I very rarely actually wear my hand knit socks except for winter time. So I'll have a good stash built up um, by the time winter comes around to kind of wear these. But yeah, look at them. Another pair finished. So they are my finished objects. I'm not going to show all my whips because I recently just showed my Timely and Lizzie jumpers uh, or sweaters, garments. Um, and I haven't made a huge amount of progress in them on the last week. I have cast on two kind of small projects, which I'll show. And then I have, I'm working on my pinwheel blanket, which I will show also because I made a good bit of progress on that yesterday. It's quite exciting. Um, 
So I am knitting a pair of socks. Um, these are just a self-striping. I'm gonna knit these for a friend for her birthday. So they are uh, Stripey Cat Yarns and this is the Hufflepuff House collection for Harry Potter. So she's a Hufflepuff, so I thought this was cute. So just doing, um, I do hers slightly smaller than mine. I do 60 stitches and because she's a little bit smaller than me. And yeah, 2.5 millimeter Chai Goo. I'm just doing vanilla. I'll probably do a cut in heel, I think, because I like to do that with um, self-striping. But this is the skein, yellows and greys. And then it came with a 20 gram skein of this yellow to do that. So I'll probably, this was a 100 gram skein. Um, I will probably make myself some shorties, I'd say, because I'll have some left over. And yeah, as I said, it is Stripey Cat Yarns and it is a 75-25 Merino Nylon. So there is that. So that is just um, a pair of socks that I cast on this week. Um, in my gorgeous, my cottage number nine bag by the lovely Terry, which I showed last week. Um, I have a project that I'm knitting for my mama, which I said I would knit for Mother's Day, which has been and gone. Um, so I'm knitting this out of Old Maiden Ant in the colorway Bluebells, and it was gorgeous. And for her, I am knitting the Paris in Berlin cowl shawl thing by Hohi Locatelli. And I started this on Friday. So it's Sunday today, so I've made a good bit of progress on this. So you knit it flat and then it does get, at one point it gets joined in the round. And this is a gorgeous colour. This as I was kind of saying, blues aren't really a colour I gravitate to, but this almost has purple, it's quite a bit of purple tones in it. And it looks absolutely beautiful. So I think this base has cashmere in it. Sorry for reaching. Um, this is, yeah, so it's Bluebells by Old Maiden Ant and it is her 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon base. Um, it's very plump. There's 300, oh, 400 yards per 100 grams. So it's, it's quite a uh, chunky fingering weight base and it is gorgeous. So this cowl is absolutely beautiful as well. So it has some texture. Um, it does eventually join in the round and becomes a, a cowl. Um, and then it has like a triangular kind of um, shawl part to it. Um, so it's really easy to wear, which is good for my mommy because she doesn't like fussing with them. Um, shawls and cowls she can't get or shawls can't get them to kind of stay or lay nicely so yeah just pull this over your head and it will be beautiful and it is gorgeous color so i may be converted to blues for a little while lovely it brings out my eyes and um, yeah that's all i have to say about this i'm knitting it on my high high interchangeables four mil four millimeter and yeah Hoping to kind of get this done shortly enough so that I can get um, a finished object for her and a gift. Now, it's probably too warm. She runs quite warm um, anyway. Um, so she will definitely only use this in the winter. So I've got plenty of time. But I don't really, I haven't really knit anything for her before. I've knit a hat. Um, so it'll be nice to actually knit her something she might use. I offered to knit her socks but she just doesn't wear socks at all like even regular cotton store bought she's not a sock woman um so yeah it's a bit strange. So uh last but not least I just wanted to talk about my pinwheel scrap blanket which I started in December it was my advent um minis that I was using um, and so I had been working mostly it is mostly advent yarns I have kind of branched out from that because I obviously didn't have enough to finish the blanket but just advent um, so what it is is it's um, these blocks that are knit with them um, different tri triangles um, and it turns into this kind of eight triangle block 
and they're so pretty. So this is a block I knit this week. There's some of my Nora George blanket club in here. I think these four are blanket clubs, some Kate Celine. This is botanical yarns, I think this pink, it's pretty. And I think this is a Stress Knits advent maybe from last year. Um, so yeah, just adding bits and bobs into these as I go. So yesterday while I was watching the um, rugby, the European Cup um, for Leinster, I decided to join all the blocks I had. So I have 13 blocks in total. So I've joined 12 and then I have that one that I just shown. So I will show you what it looks like now. Oh my God, it's so cool. I love it. Ah, it looks so cool. Um, so yeah, this is, I've done three across and four along. And I just love this. I think it looks amazing. Now it is quite small still, um, in terms of, you know, blankets. I could definitely, it could definitely be a baby blanket now if I, I'm going to add a border. I think I'm just going to add like a neutral kind of gray border around the edge just to kind of tidy it up. But I just think it is gorgeous. I love it. Love it. I think you can see it all. So this is a pattern by Mina Phillip, who is the knitting expat. And yeah, I just I'm so excited. When I was joining these yesterday, I was like super excited that it was coming together and so blankety because I had just a pile of squares. So when I kind of made it, joined them all up, it just, I think it just looks amazing. So I think I'm going to um, at least square this off, do four by four. I think Ultimately, it'll probably be a four by six, maybe. Maybe, I'll see. I'll probably just keep going. Um, but yeah, I'm going to continue for the month of April, continue just making blocks, and then maybe before I finish, I'll add in whatever blocks I have done. So, yeah. Speaking of yarn, um, is there anything else I need to say about this? Um, Mina's patterns are always ama amazing. I'll go back to speaking about yarn in a moment. <laughs> um, so Mina's patterns are always amazing. She always has really useful tutorials. So there was different methods um, of tutorials as to how you joined. I used the crochet method, which kind of leaves a ridge on the wrong side of the work, which I'm fine with. Um, it's just very quick. I find joining with a cro joining, joining through crochet is a lot more quick than um, mattress stitching. I find mattress stitching takes a while. So let's see here in the join. Now there is a bit of gray. I used gray um, throughout. I just used, I had some drops flora um, in this gray and I'll probably do the border in this color as well. I think I have a few balls of this. So I connected them all using that gray. So you can kind of see it if you pull the fabric quite far apart. The kind of join but it does not bother me in the slightest and it's the same color so it's cohesive so I'm fine with that um but yeah so Mina has tutorials uh for different joining methods and yeah she, it's they're just it's really well laid out um and I think it's gorgeous I think it's quite different to the mitred square which I'm not a huge fan of honest I know don't shoot me unpopular opinion um but yeah I think this is so pretty oh I love it um so yeah that's I think all I have to say on that one so yes now speaking of yarn um so I am part of the Nora George blanket Harry Potter blanket club and um I got my April subscription this month this week um, and the theme is magical creatures. So if you would not like to see, look away. Look away, look away. So this is, I haven't actually looked up what the colorways are. I'd imagine this is some sort of phoenix, maybe fox related. This one is fun. So one side is like yellow and swabs of yellow, white and black. This purple and blue is kind of cool with dark black. 
This one's really pretty, very delicate. And then this brownie one here is pretty too. Um, yeah, so this is my April. Um, I am going to keep continuing with the Nora George Blanket Club. She's doing it for another year. I think it's really handy to... I know people who are doing just a Harry Potter blanket with the club. So they're just following, you know, one pattern and just using these minis. But I just find it really handy to add to my Northeasterly and my Battenberg and my Pinwheel and my Granny Stripe. So yeah, that is what I'm using these for. And I will continue to get these monthly. So yeah. Um, that is basically everything for today. So usually in April, or usually each month, I like to cast on a new garment. I haven't done that this week or this month yet because I can't decide what I want to cast on. Um, I had planned on casting on The Poet by Sari Nordland, um, but I'm not sure about it at the moment. I kind of, the yarn I have is a tweed, forest that I put aside is a tweedy yarn and I'm not sure because of if it would show the yarn off to its best or the pattern. So I'm not sure about that. Um, I may, I had also planned to knit a stripes jumper by Andrea Mary, but because I'm knitting the timely, there's stripes going on there. So I'm just mm, not too sure about that either. Um, so I was potentially going to cast on a so faded because I have a good few chunky leftovers that I could use in that. I'm not too sure. Well, what I do love about Andrea Mary patterns is that she really does um, cater for a lot of body sizes and shapes um, and a lot of her patterns are size inclusive um, which I think is very important. So one thing that I'm trying to do is knit patterns that are um, that cater for all shapes and sizes and all body types um, and I am kind of mindful that Andrea Mary is a very well-known designer in the knitting community as well so um, if anyone has any suggestions of other designers who would be lesser known but are catering and kind of driving home the message of size inclusivity, please let me know down below. I know Becky Sorensen caters for all body shapes. Um, I know who else does it that I'm aware of. Uh, Jacqueline Seaslack um, is has this has a gorgeous um, kind of publication called Embody, which um, is getting a lot of focus at the moment, I think is really important. So any other um, designers that you're aware of that is um, catering for all body types, do let me know down below, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I need to do a little bit more research as to what I want to cast on. I have plenty to work on in the, in the meantime anyway, before I make a decision. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so my hair today, this is kind of moving on into grant general chatter. I got myself a new kind of hair waiver. So as you can see, my roots are kind of really bad. So to make myself feel better, I do stuff pretty with the bottoms. Um, so this, I got a hair waiver. I was testing it out now. It was the first time I tried it. So there's a few kind of harsh lines that I need to practice to get it uh, a bit more smooth. I think it's cute, very nineties or something, crimping. Um, but yeah, I think it's cute and I like it. Um, it was Easter last week, so we had a big dinner on Easter Sunday um, and we did a Zoom quiz with kind of extended family, with my grandparents. They have had their first vaccine and they're due to get their second one next week. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite slow going in terms of vaccinations here in Ireland at the moment for kind of general population. Um, we, we are making our way through it, it's kind of we're starting to get stock of actual vaccines now so um we're hopeful for things to um start ramping up and getting people vaccinated so that we can hopefully start returning to some sort of normality um but yeah it's been fine um in other kind of unrelated news myself and my sister are planning on starting a movie review kind of vlog um just as something to do together in the evenings so um, keep your eye out for that <laughs> um, via new channel which I will let you know once it's there if that's any interest to you um, but yeah other than that it's been quiet enough here um, it was nice I've been doing to couch blah, 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 blah. I've been doing couch to 5k with um, 
kind of virtually with uh, Hannah of the Corner of Cardio and a few other people um, have been taking part in that. And I've actually gotten a lot further than I had previously. So I tried to do Couch to 5K last summer and I got to the eight minutes non-stop running, I think, and I just could not crack that. Um, I think my problem was I always ran too fast and tried to um, push myself more than I could actually manage. So um, I've managed to learn to slow down. So my jogging pace is barely above a walk, <laughs> but I am getting through it. I am on finished week six. The last run of week six, I didn't 100% complete. It was a 22 minute run nonstop, which didn't happen. I think I ran for about 15 minutes I needed to stop. So I'll continue to just do that one until I crack it. And then it's supposed to be a nine week program and it'll get you to be able to run nonstop for 30 minutes. So it's also something to do um, in the days and the evenings. Um, just kind of fill up some time, I guess. Um, but other than that, it's been quite quiet here. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. That's all I can think of. Yeah, so short episode today. Um, I hope everyone is keeping well. If you have any questions, comments, um, suggestions, things you'd like to see, things you'd like me to stop doing, throw them all down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are not a subscriber and you are in the market for a new knitting podcast to watch, I record an episode every two weeks. And yeah, I'll be back in two weeks time. And yeah, I'll tell you how I'm getting on. See you all soon. Bye.